What's good, creative fam? Brandon Washington here, and it feels good to be back in my YouTube studio. The main reason why I'm back in this little setup right now is because I'm working on something really big for you guys. I'm hoping that I'll be able to launch it at the end of this month, but we'll see. Really just depends on how much time I have, but that's not why you guys are here. You guys are here because you saw the title, you clicked on the video. This is my Dear Canon video. Basically, everything I need them to do to bring me back for the 1DX Mark III. First of all, if you're brand new to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button because this channel is all about filmmaking gear, tips and tutorials. But in today's video, we are talking about the 1DX Mark III. And just to give a quick little synopsis to make it super, super clear, back like maybe two, three years ago, I bought the 1DX Mark II and I absolutely loved that camera. I thought it was probably the best camera that Canon, actually, I still think it is the best camera that camera, Canon. I still think that it is the best camera that Canon has made and it was by far my favorite camera that I've ever shot with. But there were a couple little issues that I had with the camera. One, it was way too big and at the time I was looking for one camera to do it all. I needed a camera to do photo and video at the best quality possible and that was the camera. However, Sony started coming out with some really, really nice cameras and I really wanted to test them out, which started me to kind of test the waters with Sony a little bit here, putting out a couple videos, reviewing the two. Then ultimately I decided, what the heck, let me go ahead and make the plunge and test out Sony. This basically led me to almost never taking out my Canon 1DX Mark II anymore. And long story short, I basically sold the 1DX Mark II. Since not having the 1DX Mark II anymore, however, I have been kind of itching for those Canon colors, which is one of the reasons why I picked up this guy. This is the Canon EOS R, and as great of a camera as it is for photography, when it comes to video, it is lacking in a lot of different areas. But that's because this is not really what they consider to be one of their pro-grade cameras. That would be reserved for basically a pro version of this or something like the 5D Mark IV or the 1DX Mark II. But just a couple weeks ago, Canon announced the 1DX Mark III, the successor to probably my favorite camera that I ever purchased at the time. And I will have to say that, but I think I'd be lying if I wasn't saying that when I got the initial specs, I was super excited until I really started thinking about it. See, the problem that I have with Canon is I love their cameras and what they do, they do very well, sort of like Apple. However, they tend to leave certain things out of their cameras that really just leave us scratching our heads. For example, like the Canon EOS RP, they just left out 4K at 24 frames per second and they've done that with some other cameras. Now, yes, software is making those things better, but what is the limit to leaving things out? That's why I'm a little nervous about this 1DX Mark III. See, Canon, just you to me, heart to heart, even though Canon probably won't see this and a bunch of other people will, I am super nervous about the 1DX Mark III because I would love to switch back for the 1DX Mark III, but please, please do it right. See, one of the big specs that they have right now is that they're stating that it's gonna shoot 4K 60 frames per second. I mean, which is awesome, but let's be fair, the 1DX Mark II did that as well. But what I'm really hoping for is that we're gonna get full frame 4K 60 frames per second. Another big spec that they're talking about is that this thing is gonna have 10-bit 422, which is amazing because this guy here can actually shoot 4K 10-bit, but it has a massive crop on it and you have to go out to an external recorder. But the 1DX Mark II is said to be able to do it internally, which will make things just a whole lot easier. The other thing I'm excited about with this camera is that they have announced the 1DX Mark III is going to shoot raw. And I'm assuming they mean the Canon Raw Lite, which is the same Raw that you can find in like the uh, C200, which is a phenomenal Raw. As someone who edits almost all my videos in Final Cut, this works seamlessly within Final Cut, unlike my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera right now, where I have to go into DaVinci or Premiere. So I'm excited to see Raw coming to the 1DX Mark III. They've also announced a lot of other little cool little specs like back illuminated buttons, uh, the ability to shoot longer with the same type of battery. So I'm not really sure what they're doing with power consumption there. Also this whole like 
mirrorless DSLR hybrid. Like whenever you're shooting with it, with the mirror up, you're gonna get a lot of mirrorless features, but then you can drop the mirror and still get normal DSLR features, which is pretty cool. So a little interested as far as like how they're gonna pull that whole thing off. But for me, the biggest thing that I have to say is Canon, please do not cannibalize this camera. The one thing that I'm the most nervous about is that along with this camera, Canon has also just announced the C500 Mark II. And with the C500 and basically the entire C line, they like to maintain those cameras as cinema cameras, even though it sounds like this 1DX Mark III is going to make for a pretty interesting cinema video camera. Well, Canon in the past has done things like not allow 4K at 24, taking away things like dual pixel autofocus, and all of that makes me really, really nervous. I am hoping that this camera is phenomenal and that they don't hold anything back, but ultimately we're gonna wait and see. Now I have one little theory that I just wanna throw out there really quick. And that is, I think that Sony, yes, yeah, right, I know it's a Canon video, but I'm gonna talk about Sony for a minute. I'm convinced that Sony is going to drop a camera within the same day or maybe even two to three days after the 1DX Mark III comes out. Hear me out. I believe that Sony's going to drop the Sony A7S III when the 1DX Mark III comes out. And here's the reason why I say that. I have been feeling this way. I've talked to my buddy Styx about this. I think that Sony has been sitting on their cameras waiting for Canon to come out with their cameras and then releasing a camera that's equal to, or if not, maybe a little bit better than that camera the same day. Just remember, just a couple days ago or just a couple months ago, Canon released the 90D and the M6 II, and the same day, Sony releases its own little mirrorless cameras, the 6400 and the 6100. Coincidence? I don't think so. I personally think that Sony has been sitting on these cameras for a while, waiting for Canon to release something and then ready to drop their cameras to compete with it the same day. But this just means that whenever Canon does come out with the 1DX Mark III, if Sony releases the A7S III, it should be an exciting day for cameras. So when do I think these cameras are gonna be coming? Well, I think they're gonna be coming like they said in the early part of 2020, but I think they're gonna try to get them out as soon as possible because as we all know, the Olympics are next year and Canon is desperately gonna wanna try to get these cameras out to be used during the Olympics. Again, these are primarily like sports, like high-end sports photography cameras with the 1DX Mark III. So you can best be sure that you're gonna see tons of them at the Olympics. So they gotta get them out early enough for photographers to get their hands on it, be able to figure out how to use it, know how to work with the new system and then be able to actually capitalize on it for the Olympics. So this means that basically before the summer of next year, we might be seeing a 1DX Mark III that's absolutely stunning, and in my hunch is right, and we'll also get a Sony A7S III that's absolutely stunning. So I am got my fingers crossed on both of these cameras coming out. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Are you excited about the 1DX Mark III? Could you care less? Do you hope that with the 1DX Mark III we'll finally get a Sony A7S III? Who knows, but I think next year, early in the year, is gonna be super exciting when it comes to video cameras. But let me know what y'all think. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions about the gear that I use or anything like that, check out the links down below and keep your eyes peeled because I got something special coming up just at the end of the month. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.